mean, that was kind of the, the, the early trial periods of Tesla, right? They had all this executive turnover, some financial issues. Sure. And uh, <laughs> it's been smooth sailing since then. Uh, no, they still had, they still had <laughs> a Lived happily ever a, after. A Tesla's a uh, <laughs> perfect company. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, a lot of you are familiar with Tesla. I'm Josh with The Market Hustle. This is Devin Kuczynski. Hey there. I'm not with The Market Hustle, but I know Josh. He does know uh, me. I do real estate stuff and property management stuff. So I don't know. I've seen a business before. I know what it looks like. Yeah. You know, he I does know about things. profits and loss and, <laughs> and bookkeeping and stuff. So that's fun. Uh, plus, I don't know. I like to pay attention to stocks and the business world in general. Um, plus, I'm a big fan of Elon Musk and everything he does. So super, super excited to be talking about Tesla today. Because they are changing the world. They, they are. They're trying, at least. Yeah, um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. Devin's going to go ahead and kind of just run us down through the, I don't know, the nifty-gifty kind of, of yeah, kind Elon of how, Musk. how we got where we are. How right? Tesla started. I mean, at this point, it's been well, about 20 years or so since Tesla, for, well, about 15 years since Tesla really, really started. So uh, there's kind of a lot to cover there, a lot of interesting uh, uh, business maneuvers that kind of happened during that time. So... You know, Tesla today, taking on Ford and GM and the, the automotive giants, uh, this story actually kind of begins with e-readers. Josh, so you yeah. know, like Kindles and Nooks and, and e-readers. So like iPads. You know, it yeah, yeah, iPads. like, pre, you know, pre-iPad. So, Josh, quick question for you. So the, the what are the e-readers that you know of? Well, um, I, you know, I know a couple. I mean, they, they have, of course, iPads, right? You know, yeah. Good old iPads. Okay. Um, th does it involve something with PayPal? Uh, well, the, PayPal's in the story, but it, it's not, uh, you know, PayPal helped Tesla exist, weirdly enough. But um, no, so I actually started back in uh, 1997 okay. with a company called Nuvo Media, and they made something called The Rocket, which was like the first kind of e-ink uh, e-reader <coughs> which is crazy they were super super ahead of the curve with that i mean the kindle didn't come out until 2007 you know barnes and noble's nook didn't come out until 2011 was it wasn't elon musk like relatively young too at this time like, he was uh i don't remember what year he was born um it was like the late 70s i think so i think he was, he was in his early he, 20s he was a younger dude in the late 90s you know doing his thing um <clears throat> but anyway so the first real e-reader that anybody knows about came out in like 2004 kind of, it was a Sony Libra. Um, that didn't do super well, obviously, because they don't still sell it. Um, so back in 1997, this company called Nuvo Media was selling a $500 e-reader, the first one that was like mass produced, super commercially available. Okay. Um, in fact, they sold 20,000 of those in 1999. Wow. So the two guys that started that company, Martin Eberhard and uh, Mark Tarpening, uh, ended up original actual founders of Tesla but so they're messing around with e-readers and <clears throat> and all that and they were trying to find solid practical applications that were commercially viable for lithium-ion batteries okay okay so now we've got that so what else can you use lithium-ion batteries for Josh well uh, they definitely involve electric right electricity yeah, yeah. So... what kind of uh, maybe <laughs> automotive applications there uh, might be perhaps I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves it's yeah, only the 1990s yeah. right now so. yeah that's true it is the late 90s so <laughs> anyway so they sold their e-reader company for 187 million dollars to uh, Gemstar slash TV Guide International you guys remember TV Guide is like the magazine TV this guide. is like Seinfeld days you right know, this is, you couldn't look stuff up on the internet so you get your little magazine and tell you what time everything was on. Um, I think they still exist. I don't know what they're doing, but yeah, I didn't hear otherwise. Sure. Yeah. So anyway, so they sold that, their, their e-reader company, for $187 million. So now you're two electrical engineers that have a solid background in lithium-ion batteries that now collectively have $187 million. Oh, wow. What right? A, yeah. What a, what a capital yeah. investment That's they can do. pretty decent. Yeah, you know, I, I can buy. I mean, I've got that much sitting in my couch. <laughs> you know, whatever. So... So anyway, fast forward now. They sold the company in 1999, and it is now the year 2000. All right. 2000. So the boom in 2000. Right? Yeah, 2000. exactly, exactly. The, the change of the millennium. That was and the you guys decade. remember when the world ended and you know nothing happened after that? I think was, I was five years old. It was awesome. At the time. Really? Yeah. Oh, I was seven. Oh, oh nice. How about that? Wow. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so in 2000, uh, Martin Eberhard got divorced. So now he is a single dude, freshly divorced, in his 40s. Knows a lot about batteries. What do 
freshly divorced dudes in their 40s usually do. They go out and get a sports car, right? Definitely, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, Martin wasn't super crazy about any of the internal combustion and stuff. You know, he's environmentally conscious. He, he could see where the world was going and, and our over-dependence on fossil fuels. So he's like, well, I really want a cool, flashy red sports car uh, for my midlife crisis, but nothing like that really exists. You know, I want something electric. It's a low carbon footprint and, and super efficient, et cetera, et cetera. And this was the early 2000s, right? This was 2000. So, okay. Yeah, this was the year 2000. Wow, yeah. that is early 2000s. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Bush just became president. Oh, wow. You know, Supreme Court just decided that. Uh, so, all right. So they're sitting around and they're thinking, all right, well, let's, let's get into electric cars. So let's jump ahead. It's 2003 now. Okay. All right. So there was this tiny startup. Um, I don't know if anybody's heard of them. Uh, they're called General Motors. General Motors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, heard, I've heard them. They do the car stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. some cars right. over time. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so they had this vehicle. It was called the EV1, the Electric Vehicle 1. And they were the first ones to kind of produce on a mass scale a commercially viable electric car. Mm -hmm. Right? They were kind of paving the way there. Uh, they made that from 1996 to 1999. Okay. Stopped making them in 1999 because they just weren't profitable for them to manufacture. They had this warranty where they had to replace parts, and that was costing them a ton of money. They weren't profitable, though, right? Uh, the vehicles themselves, the EV1s, were not profitable. Hmm. Um, they were very, very popular. Um, they only manufactured about a 1,000 of them, and they were leasing them all out. And everybody that leased one of them loved it. They were super in love with the vehicle. Um, another major issue was the fact that there wasn't any real charging infrastructure to speak of. Sure. So unless you lived in, say, Southern California, where they were making these, uh, there's probably some chargers around there. But other than that, you, you know, you can't drive through Kansas. <laughs> there's not going to be Plus, anything in Kansas in 2003 for you. Right. I could imagine that yeah. those cars didn't go very far in general. Because I know right no. now, I think Teslas can go like two, 300 miles max. Yeah. So in the early 2000s, when these electric cars were created by General Motors, what are they going, like 20, 30 miles? Uh, well, at most... <laughs> get across the, get across most, the city, The maybe. EPA <laughs> gave the EV1, uh, they rated it at about 142 miles of range. And that oh, was wow. a very, very aggressive estimate. In, in reality, it was probably closer to like 80 to 100 miles. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's not great. You're not covering long distances. That'll get you to and from work, but not really much right, right. beyond that, you know? Um, so anyway, they stopped making it. And then in 2003, GM said, you know what, forget it. Let's get all these things off the road. We're going to pretend this never existed. So they rounded up, they repoed all of the, the leases that they had out there for these cars, and they crushed them. They just destroyed every single one of these EV1s. Sure. Um, there's actually a really, really awesome documentary about this. It's called Who Killed the Electric Car. It came out in like 2006. Um, but it kind of covers all of that. There was the mix of it not being super profitable for GM, uh, coupled with lack of charging infrastructure and then of course you've got big oil and the, the other large automotive you know makers that um right and i mean keep in mind in yeah the the adoption adoption in general it takes a long time right i mean there uh, we've had like this big innovation disruption going on throughout the entire like last 20 years so electric cars even though they were kind of they were they were just kind of too early right in the yeah. early 2000s yeah. uh people like it, it wasn't getting mass adoption it was still kind of strange Gasoline cars were still just the way to go. So it's still, it's it's taking time, right? And this goes a lot, I mean, just kind of on a tangent. A lot of people ask me what I think about blockchain, Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. I think blockchain technology in general is fantastic technology that is definitely going to change the world in one way or another. I mean, it already kind of has in a, in a smaller scale. But right now, it's just extremely early in the process, right? It, and it reminds me about this story right here where early 2000s, GM created an electric car but they're just kind of early in the process. Like mm -hmm. adoption of technology of things takes time. And not only that, people kind of hate change naturally. Like humans yeah. aren't big on change. Especially the so, car buying public. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's kind of a good, I like, I want to stop right here just because it's a good, uh, you know, story just to kind of show that technology adaption or, you know, newer disruptive industries take time to really adopt in the market yeah that's so, true that's all i want to say they're a little ahead of their time right so, yeah yeah they're so far ahead of their time actually that to this day there's only one ev1 that still exists oh, intact wow. it's in the smithsonian actually. nice so that's a it's an interesting little piece of uh of uh automotive history that so, is very interesting you know, as taxpayers you're welcome to stop by the smithsonian anytime it's free it yeah totally free oh, yeah. Wow. yeah that's your tax dollars at work perfect there you go. let's yeah. go so, okay, so that was 2003. They, they repoed all the EV1s and destroyed it, and you kind of figure, well, that's got to be it for electric cars for mm -hmm. a little while, right? I mean, that kind of that kind of put a damper on it for a little bit. But uh, so we're 2004, right, the next year. So at this point, uh, 
uh, Eberhard and Tarpenning have been um, kind of working on this, designing their electric vehicle sports car two seater, you know, thing. Their their goal was to uh, be able to cost effectively mass produce uh, a fun, stylistically interesting, um, affordable electric cars for the masses. Sure. Right. I mean, kind of like how the Model T made buying a car affordable for everybody and the Volkswagen did the same in Germany. Right. And they're trying to do the same thing, a car s- for the people. Right. To scale it up so they have the yeah. the infrastructure to really get it going. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So they're they're trying to trying to make something that the average uh, you know, automotive consumer can can afford. So at this point they're trying to raise money, right? They're going to venture capitalists, they're going to the Saudi government, they're going all over the place trying to raise money to uh, to start a car company because it turns out it's really really expensive. To uh, start mass manufacturing, yeah, brand new technology, it's not easy. <laughs> Weirdly no. enough, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, you're going to need something above your your weekly allowance to, <laughs> to cover that. Yeah. So anyway, at this point, they approached Elon Musk, who uh, you know you may or may not have heard of. Elon Musk. I, the name rings a bell. Yeah, he I does. Know. Yeah, I, I think I've seen I've heard him around of him. somewhere. Yeah. Right. So anyway, they're like, "Hey, Elon Musk, you've got some money, and you like advancing new emerging technologies and and what have you." So he chips in thirty million. Which, is this the wait, is this the backdrop? Is this the time that he exited PayPal? Right. This is yeah. I'm getting there. Oh, okay. A, I'm getting ahead of we're myself. Gonna, we're right. gonna step right. backwards in time here for a second, but we're gonna leave the Tesla story here for now, and say they're raising money. Elon Musk chips in thirty million dollars in two thousand four, and is now the majority shareholder. He's the controlling shareholder in Tesla. Among okay. Other entities. All right. So, so Elon Musk. Right. Who's this guy? You know, let's learn about him a little bit. He's so a, he's a character. Let me tell you. He's something. <laughs> So, now the year's 1995, okay? We've okay. stepped back in time again. So, Elon's brother, Kimball, and him, they've been hearing a lot of talk about this internet thing, right? Which, you know, I don't know for sure, but I've heard is still around. I think people are still using that. No, it's just a fad. For something or other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind yeah. of went away, like, 2004, 2005. Yeah, 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 internet, definitely. That's, that's <laughs> over. Right? Internet, shim internet. Yeah. So, anyway, they were they were pretty early adopters of, of this whole internet thing. So, they built what was essentially, like, an internet phone book. Right, it was called Zip2, and hmm. the way that worked, uh, just in case you're curious, would uh, be that like local businesses and newspapers would uh, buy space in there. They would buy a listing, and it's this online directory. Here's this business, here's their address, here's their phone number. Exactly the same information you find in a phone book, okay. uh, just digitized you know, and, and in that database that you can find. So they were selling listings in their online phone book, and uh, they ended up selling that company in 1999 for 350 Forty million dollars. Okay, uh, which is pretty awesome for a phone book. That's a couple bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> decent. So you know, anyway, so he took his money from the sale of Zip Two and decided to uh, to start another venture. That's what he does. You'll you'll find as we talk more about Elon Musk, uh, he, he, you can't stop him from starting <laughs> companies. That's Definitely, just, he does it impulsively. He's an innovator. That's what yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he's addicted to companies in the same way that people are like addicted to smoking. Sure. Same thing, you know. Um, so anyway, at this point, he uh, he figures, all right, well, what doesn't exist yet? There's no online bank, right? All the banks are brick and mortar. It's this huge establishment that is pretty much inaccessible, un- unless you you can't break into the banking industry. Oh, there's right? a pain, there's a problem. There's a problem. With there's that. a problem. Okay. Yeah, there's a problem. So like any innovator, you see a problem and you try to come up with a solution, right? So they started X.com, just X X.com. Uh, which eventually became PayPal. Uh, okay. You know, they merged two companies, and uh, there was a whole lot of kind of back and forth executive infighting, and it changed hands a couple of times. And there's a whole other thing there, which, by the way, I think we should do one of these just on Elon Musk's career. Yeah, um, uh, I think we'd have plenty. Because this of... one's just Tesla. There's, <laughs> there's so much more to, to get into there. But long story short there, um, they kicked Elon Musk out of PayPal. Uh, he still had a stake in it, but he wasn't a, a controlling, you know, he wasn't the CEO of it or anything. Uh, so anyway, in 2002, eBay bought PayPal for one and a half billion dollars. Okay. Uh, again, decent chunk of change. So Definitely. now Elon's got a ton of money, right? And what do you do with that? So he cashed out PayPal and started up SpaceX, which again, you might've heard of, uh, just launching, you know, shit into space. It's great. 
Uh, Starting a rocket company. Yeah, again, right? One of those startup, like just taking on NASA, just <laughs> casually. <laughs> I guess if you have the resources too, why not? Disrupting the rocket industry. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's like, you know, it's 2002, 2003, and Elon Musk is out in the California desert blowing up rockets and stuff. Nice. Um, yeah. So anyway, because of his large investments in, uh, in Tesla, at this point, we right. talked about it earlier. He put thirty million in, and then over the next year or so, he put another forty million in, off and on. So at this point, so he really believed in this Tesla thing. He did. He did. He really latched onto it yeah. and, and really saw something there. Um, so at this point, he's got like seventy million of his own dollars uh, tied up in Tesla, and uh, so they made him chairman of the board. You know, that's fair. He's head of the board. He's not the CEO or the CFO or anything. Right. That's still, but he uh, owns like a majority of the company at this yeah, time. So exactly, exactly. They're like, so hey, it's... Elon Musk, you wanna, you wanna maybe, you know, you know, get it in control or something or help yeah, us out a little bit. Exactly, you know? exactly. Most of your money's tied up in the company, so. Right. But at this point, Everhard and Tarpenning are still the the head honchos. Right. There, you know. Okay. But, uh, but because of Musk's majority shareholder status, uh, you know, he was really kind of calling the shots there. And right. This also kind of sets the precedent for. The rest of his career, um, you know, he was kind of a control freak, wouldn't take no for an answer from anybody, was just demanding insane, He's resilient. insane hours. Yeah, from, from employees and, and just generally being a, a nitpicky douchebag <laughs> in, the, in the nicest possible way. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so he, he does this for a while and the Tesla board starts to get, you know, kind of kind of tired of this. But because he's the chairman, he's running the board. So, uh, so anyway, we get all the way to 2008, and they kicked out Everhart as CEO. Musk, they, they met with the board, and they, they hmm. voted him out and said, you know what? Musk is in charge of the company. Didn't now. like He's the, the guy. chairman. They didn't like the guy. No, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's less a matter of not liking him and more a matter of him not just doing whatever Elon said 100% of the time. Right. Um, well, and Elon, I mean, he's the, he's the type of guy. He's an innovator, right? He knows what he's doing. He's an entrepreneur. Uh, he owns a majority of the company, so I think in his eyes, he's like, you know, this guy, you know, I'm telling him what to do, essentially, so yeah. why don't I just kick out that guy? And yeah, I'll exactly. Do it what have these guys done? They made, like, a book thing? Like, cool, wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, okay. So, it's 2008, and I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. In between the time that the board voted out Everhard, uh, there was, like, a, maybe a seven, eight-month to a year period where Tesla went through, I think, like two other CEOs. Um, they tried to get somebody in charge to kind of take the reins, and, and it just wasn't working out. There was a lot of conflict of interest, a lot of personality conflict with, you know, Musk being Musk. And uh, Not only that, there was thing. a big recession, too. That so did happen. I, I was, vaguely uh... recall something, <laughs> something along those lines happening. So, yeah, so it's 2008. You've got, they can't keep a CEO. They are... In the same recession that every other company in, the, in right. the world is experiencing at that time, and keep in mind, if you remember, this was a time when like GM had to get bailed out by the federal government. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they, the auto industry, the auto was industry not was having doing a hard too well time. <laughs> American, time. it was a, not a good time to be an American automobile manufacturer. Um, at this point in time, two thousand eight, they've got one model. They're selling the Tesla Roadster. Mm. Uh, yeah, that was their flagship. That was what they set out to build, and they had that. Uh, but uh, it cost one hundred nine thousand dollars, which I think you and I can agree is not a super uh, consumer friendly price point. The no, pool that's... of potential buyers for that is pretty small. Yeah, you're, you're limiting yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, at this point, they hadn't even really started production. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, they've been taking reservations uh, for these and pre orders for like four years at this point. So you've got a bunch of celebrities sitting around. I think Leonardo DiCaprio was really on board early. I think Tom Hanks was in there. Okay. But so they just been, you know, they gave them, I don't remember what the amount was. It was like a hundred K to reserve it. And you got some a plaque and some other special stuff. Gotcha. But it's been four years and they've got nothing, you know, they've just right, got all right. this investor money and, and not really a whole lot to show from it. So Tesla is kind of on the, on the cusp of bankruptcy. Right. And all the automotive journalists at the time were kind of calling this the death of Tesla. Ah. They actually, they, um, uh, what was it? It was a it was an automotive blog that started a regular column called Tesla Death Watch. Okay. Um, in late two thousand eight, and and they just had constant updates on like, oh, here's their production numbers. Oh, it's, they're it's losing almost, money hand over fist. Yeah, it's almost like they needed to like you know throw some uh, electric. Yeah, I think so. They needed to spark a spark, spark a revolution. Spark a right? revolution. Yeah. There we go. Hey, revolution. Oh, your computer did. Yeah, my computer's breaking. All right. Oh, man. There we go. Hey, it's back. Hey, we're back. Oh, nice. Perfect. Hey, nice new computer by the way. Thank you. Josh's Appreciate old it. computer. 
crap of that. And it yeah, awful. it was garbage. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so everybody's saying Tesla's not going to make it. In fact, I found a, uh, here's a fun quote from uh, the automotive blog, Autoblog Green from May 2008. Oh, they must be the ones that are like, you know, looking for uh, the new automobiles. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, cool. The, let's the let's hear what they have to ones. say. What, yeah. what, is, what does Autobill Green so have to May say? So May 2008, they had to say, quote, Tesla hasn't produced any real cars yet, broke their promise on starting production again, and don't plan to build any cars for another year. That kind of sounds familiar. It does. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's almost like I vaguely recall hearing that same exact thing like last year. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. How are they going to deliver 5,000 cars in July or whatever? Yeah. But uh, so anyway, so Musk was like, you know what? Screw this. Everybody says we're done. So he said, forget this. I'm CEO now. I'm in charge. I'm the captain. I'm the captain. Okay. The one single captain of the ship. And Elon just... Musk Elon Musk is taking over Tesla at this point. 2008, right? Yeah, this is 2008. 2008. Okay. This is late 2008, early 2009. All right. And what's, what's he going to do? Well, he takes over as CEO and immediately fires 25% of all Tesla employees. Okay, sure. He says, we're, we're not making any money. We haven't even started production yet. You're all fired. <laughs> yeah, so, and you know, business is business. Yeah, and so right, you know. Overnight gets rid of 25% of, of the entire company. And, uh, and then he also threw in a bunch of his own money and uh, again, went back to private venture capitalists and, and general uh, independent investors. Raised $187 million in a year. Kept Tesla out of bankruptcy, kept the doors open, kept the lights on. So this is when the Silicon Valley stuff started happening, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think to... this is kind of when you can really start to see the, the second tech bubble, right? Because the late 90s, early 2000s, there was the, the, the you know, e-business boom. The second and current the... tech bubble. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, so, you know, that one crashed and we forgot about it for a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, back around 2009, 2010, this all started up again. Okay. Same all right. time Bitcoin started happening and... And that whole shebang. So this is the modern era now. Perfect. You know, this is the modern startup. So we're here. Silicon we're in our era. Stuff. We're we're here. Exactly. Exactly. These are things that you might remember uh, remember happening. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So anyway, at this point, he's got. Oh no, he still has seventy million of his own funds in there. Okay. Uh, in addition to, to some others, so he's pretty heavily invested in it. So July two thousand nine, right after this whole rigmarole, executive changeover, production issues. Uh, July 2009, Tesla posts their first ever profitable quarter, um, we which, to... you know, would seem like a pretty good sign. Sure. It seemed like they'd be on top of that. Yeah, I'm just going to get into this later, but um, spoiler alert, profitable quarters for Tesla aren't uh, super easy to come by. They're not as common. Yeah, they're a lot <laughs> less common than you would think for a company that's existed for, you know, 15 years or whatever. Um, so anyway, also in 2009, fun fact, uh, Eberhard sued uh, Elon Musk, which... Uh, and that was the old CEO that got kicked out. That right? was the old CEO fired, that right? got forced out. And around this time, you know, with the, the Tesla marketing and branding and, and their about section on their website, right. it, the, the Tesla message seems to be that Elon Musk is the founder. He's the visionary wonderkin that started the company and, and led it from scratch. Right. Um, which we know to not be the case. The company was like four years old by the time Musk even got there. So he, he didn't create it, but I do want to give him credit because he did kind of revive it, right? I mean, uh, yeah, oh yeah, no, 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 absolutely. I mean, Tesla would likely not exist today without uh, without Musk's input. That was but, Musk. uh, Yeah, exactly. So anyway, 2009, Musk says he invented the company. And so the original CEO dude, one of the original two co-founders, uh, Susan, for slander, libel, and breach of contract for we've heard that stealing credit. Well. That is weird. Well, no, Josh. <laughs> actually, that's incorrect because this was actually the, uh, you know, they ended up settling out of court. And to this day, that's the last time anybody tried to sue Elon Musk or Tesla, um, except for those other 38 times. Uh, since then, that somebody has tried to sue Elon Musk or Tesla. Yeah, but those so, don't count. Those don't count. Those don't count. Yeah, count. No, <laughs> it is what it is. But they settled that out of court, so that's that's done. But uh, yeah, they're, do you like that picture I added in? By the way, I do like that picture. <laughs> this is the uh, this is the iconic photo that'll probably be in history books in the future. But that is the uh, Joe Rogan, Elon Musk uh, photo. He's that's my wallpaper, by the way, on my uh, my laptop. Yeah, yeah exactly. just, <laughs> that's also his regular that's, wallpaper too. He's got it just plastered all over the wall here, just yeah. like thousands. Of all throughout my photo. yeah, all throughout yeah. the office. It's a little makes me a little uncomfortable. Actually. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. it's motivation. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, that was kind of the 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 early trial periods of Tesla, right? They had all this executive turnover, some financial issues. Sure. And uh, <laughs> it's been smooth sailing since then. Uh, no, they've still had, they've still had <laughs> they've a happily ever a, after. A Tesla is a <laughs> perfect company. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Great, great number of uh, crises and public relation nightmares since then. But, um, but that kind of gets us to the Tesla that we know 
and love today, right? It's the the greatest Tesla, yeah. yeah. yeah and this, exactly. all right. So let's go ahead. That was a great. Uh, thanks for that uh, history lesson of Tesla. Yeah, that was. Right. Absolutely. Awesome to kind of go through and check it all out. Uh, I'm going to break through. We're going to go through the finances now. This is the stuff that you guys probably want to hear. Um, how is Tesla doing financially? Where are they at? Are they profitable? They're not. Um, <laughs> and where's the general direction of the company? So um, a lot of you, I'm sure, are familiar with Tesla. Um, Devin gave a, if you're not, Devin gave a really good yeah, picture. Yeah, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> he gave a really good picture of how Tesla kind of came about and whatnot. Um, so essentially... Um, Tesla has been doing pretty well relatively when it comes to revenue, revenue growth since the early 2008s. So uh, they've grown exponentially revenue wise um, throughout the whole entire decade of the 2010s up until now. Um, but revenue is one thing, right? And a lot of people forget that, that just because you're increasing your revenue uh, year over year, every single year, that does not necessarily mean um, you're, you're still in good condition. Right. Because you still got to keep the factory open. Right? Yeah, you still got to pay everybody. You got to be profitable. Yeah, you got to right? run the cafeteria. You got to be profitable. You know? And, yeah. uh, you know, nonetheless, Tesla, you know, it's it's normal for newer companies and startup companies in general to not be profitable at first. That's that's normal. I mean, that's kind of how the startup world works. You got to. first, like, three to five years, usually something like that. It, yeah, yeah, it really varies. I mean, yeah. Apple, Apple and Amazon weren't profitable for the longest time. You know, it took them a while. So it, it kind of varies. So I get it. But uh, revenue in general with Tesla has been on an exponential curve. Uh, just I have some numbers here. Um, in 2012, they had a, an annual revenue of $413 million, which is pretty decent coming from 2008 when they were just in a crisis and they're actually starting to have, throw in some revenue. This uh, electric car thing starting to kind of catch on a little bit, right? Yeah, absolutely. They're starting to get some momentum. Uh, so fast track to 2016, they hit $7 billion in revenue. Uh, 2017, $11.76 billion in revenue. That's a 67% increase from the previous year. And then 2018, just this last year, Tesla had $21.4 billion in revenue, which is an 82% increase. So they're they're since, growing. Since the year before? Since, since the year, year before. Year over year? 82%. Year over year, yeah. So they're growing exponentially. That's very impressive. Revenue-wise. Yeah. So yeah. the growth has been, it's been great, right? And fast, you know, pivot over to the profitable side. That's kind of where the concern is with Tesla, right? Um, you know, you'll hear it all the time. There's, there's two sides of Tesla. There's people who are pro Tesla. They think it's the future, which I mean, the technology is great. Um, and it has a lot of growth potential. And then there's the other side where they're like, this company is just burning through cash. They're literally throwing cash into a fire and they can't turn a profit. They can't have a profitable year and they're just digging themselves into a hole. Uh, a lot of people on both sides. So uh, profitability, uh, you know, actually this, this year, um, has actually been a decent year for Tesla. They're still not pro they're still not expected to be profitable, but it's been a better year for them. They uh, last quarter Q3 was actually they actually were profitable and uh, estimators, I'm sorry, analysts said they expected them not to be profitable in that quarter, mm -hmm. which is why the stock has been on this just exponential run mm -hmm. because they kind of just beat all these expectations. They were profitable for that quarter um, and everybody's happy at least for the short term, right? That's one of like what three or four profitable quarters that they've had ever? yeah so on record uh tesla has had four profitable quarters um since 2010 i want to say okay. so um and keep yeah. in mind there's four quarters in a year so yeah. you know it's and that's when they went public right that's why those numbers are available correct right? yes correct correct, so, correct. Yeah. so um they are still kind of in that you know trying to figure out things trying to get some uh get those numbers up and whatnot um, fast forward over to 2019. Um, this year, like I said, has been a great, I'm, I'm not going to say great year, but it's been a lot better. It's, it's been more, there's more insight, there's more direction in the company, um, which is kind of giving investors more of a feel for where things are going um, with the company. Uh, last, Like I said, last quarter, they actually announced that they built their new factory in Shanghai, and basically that factory is ahead of schedule, right? So they... They want to move their production of the new Model Model 3 car to China just to kind of reduce costs and reduce the general production cost for that car. Because it turns out in the U.S., it's a little pricey to manufacture these cars, right? Yeah. Um, and pay people living wages and stuff. Though. Right, yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> so it, it's uh, apparently Elon Musk and other analysts have expected to save around 65% um, on each Model 3 car in Shanghai, China. 
So when investors heard that this plant is ahead of schedule and they might even start producing cars like as soon as this year, or sorry, next 20 years, 2020, early 2020, um, that really boosted up the stock because this is going to really solve that bottleneck production problem they've had um, in Tesla. So that's kind of been great news. Um, previously, I mean, Tesla earlier this year in 2019 Q1, Tesla lost um, much more than expected. Analysts expected uh, the stock's loss to be 69 cents per um, share, and it ended up being uh, triple that. Uh, they lost $2.90 after adjust everything adjusted and whatnot per share. Uh, so they lost essentially triple of what they were expected to, to lose um, by analysts. So um, they've had ups and downs, as yeah, you can see, sure. right? It's, it's gone back and forth. Um, they are, analysts do predict that in 2020, uh, they will see a profitable year for Tesla. That's the projection the year, huh? for the entire year. They're, they're expected to finally turn a profit in 2019. I'm um, sorry, 2020. Um, and that really, uh, Q1 of 2020 will be a big indicator mm -hmm. for where Tesla will be. Uh, Q3, so last quarter, and then this current quarter, Q4 of 2019, is expected to be profitable for Tesla. That's expected. And it has been, it was last quarter, or last year, 2018, Q3, Q4, were profitable. So that's kind of like their their good year as a company um, for Tesla is really these years, and they kind of expect them to be profitable now. Now, Q1, they've never been profitable in Q1 throughout the last decade. So... If they can turn a profit in Q1 of 2020, so the next three months, essentially, if they can become profitable, which this new production plant is kind of seeming promising, mm -hmm. um, which is why the stock's going crazy right now, sure. um, this will be a good indicator for Tesla as a company in the short term, right? In the short term, it, things are going to be starting to look okay. And they do, like, relatively. Um, so that's kind of why we're at this big Tesla boom, the Tesla stock boom, is because investors are beginning to kind of see, well, hey, Tesla's starting to meet their milestones. They're starting to hit what we want to see, which is profitability, um, and they're chugging forward, right? Sure. So, model. There's, there's still a lot of Tesla shorts out there, though. I mean, there's still. Yeah, there's, yeah. like I said, it's, it's essentially a battleground of the bulls and the bears of the stock, right? There's people who think the stock's great, they're on the right track, they're doing the right thing, and there's people who are the complete opposite that think, hey, this is all artificially grown, this stock is just a bubble. And I mean, to be fair, compared to the entire automobile industry, Tesla is completely overvalued. The only thing that's kind of holding Tesla up is they're considered a tech company, right? Mm -hmm. So because they're all this technological, um, they're doing this tech thing, um, they kind of see this as a potential for more growth with Tesla. So that's kind of where they kind of differentiate themselves from the rest of the automobile industry. It seems, it seems to be a lot less like the investor sentiment and the, the share price and whatnot for it. it seems to be based a lot less off of their, their current or recent actual numbers and more so about the future potential uh, of, the, of the company, which is how all these tech valuations kind of end up where they're at you know? right i mean that's how you have good grief uh what was it what, uh, there was one of these startups recently that went public and and shot up like 60 percent right after their uh, beyond meat <laughs> that was uh, more than 60 could, that, that was, yeah it was like 200 percent. yeah yeah ridiculous? They, yeah they are, that's yeah. a whole wild but, but it's <laughs> there's this whole mood of uh of speculation on all these these tech companies where it's looking you know 10 15 20 years down the line where are they going to be at and that is factored into the share price right now. Right. Which, you know, it's essentially it's essentially <laughs> gambling, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah the, the fundamentals of, of Tesla are not good, right? I mean, yeah. if you're looking at the fundamentals, you'd probably stay away from the stock because yeah, it's, Warren it's, Buffett would say it was a very very bad idea. He would not invest in Tesla. <laughs> <buy> <laughs> he right would now. not invest in Tesla. It's basically essentially it's all based on speculation right now, right? Um, and let's okay, so I'm just gonna kind of pivot real quick. The Model 3 has been a game changer for Tesla. Uh, this this car, it's essentially their low-priced vehicle, and that's their vehicle that they're trying to uh, disrupt everything, right? right. Like that's going to be that was their, their goal from the very beginning. Yeah, that's like their yeah. iPhone, like the original iPhone that kind of took over this the phone industry, right? Sure. That's that's what they expect the Model 3 to be. 
Uh, it's starting, it's supposed to be cheaper, so it's priced at around 35000 so it's relatively more affordable for the average person oh, yeah. compared to the $100,000 uh, electric cars we were talking about earlier. Um, the problem is uh, Tesla's had a lot of pre-orders on this car, and like I mentioned earlier, the problem with this has just been the production of the Model 3, um, which they've, in the last two quarters, they've been able to kind of address that with the uh, opening of that Shanghai manufacturer and they're also expected to open up another uh, manufacturer in Europe so yes. they're really working on trying to figure out this bottleneck problem that they're having with the Model 3 sure. and that's kind of the name of the game because if they can get this Model 3 car just on a like a, produ a smooth production sale then mm -hmm. this could really be a game changer for Tesla potentially yeah because the thing is because you have a cheaper car you also have smaller profit margins um, so it's kind of like a double-edged sword in a way. It, it could benefit because they could scale up faster, but they're also going to be at the benefit of they're a low-cost provider, which means they essentially are competing on price at that point. Right. Well, it's also tricky too, though, because in their, their segment with the, you know, the Model 3, and they're kind of, with that, they're trying to compete directly with um, like other luxury sedan manufacturers, right? So like BMW, Mercedes, and oh, and keep in mind, like GM, Ford, all these companies are much, much, much bigger than oh, Tesla. Yeah, I mean, they have economies, economics at scale. They, they yeah. can they can mass produce much more efficiently well, than Tesla. They can do Tesla. it so much more cheaply. I mean, plus it's, it's still, you know, they, they've been, I don't want to say like Ford and GM and whatnot have been using the same manufacturing methods for 60 years because they haven't. They've automated and, and developed and, and kept up with it. But, sure. you know, Tesla is working with all electric powertrains. And that's it, you know? So they're working on batteries. They're trying to automate their factories as, as highly as possible. Of course. And uh, so you're going to get some growing pains with that, for sure. I mean, it's it's trying out a whole new method of manufacturing a product that's been around for, for a very long time. So, sure, sure. You know, when you're trying to change the game like that, it's, it's going to take a little bit to really iron out the kinks. Definitely, 100%. Yeah. And just to kind of double, just to kind of touch on the financials a little bit more, um, their gross profit margin is something I've been really paying attention to. So uh, we can see that in, after introducing the Model 3, their gross profit margins fell significantly, which makes sense. You have a lower cost car, your profit margins are going to be lower on that car, right? The thing that really, really is interesting to me is that I, I expected this profit margin to really just drop down significantly for the next probably year or two. But they were able to stop the gross profit margin from falling in Q1 of 2019, and it kind of leveled out in Q2. And Q3 of 2019, the gross profit margin actually went up. Now, what does that mean in layman's terms? Let me kind of simplify that a little bit. Essentially, what that you means... Look at me when you said that. What? I was like, look at me when you said that. I don't know. Explain I just, it for this no, man Let's explain here. it for Devin. Devin's not really... Put it in terms he can understand. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, what that means is that Tesla has been able to reduce costs efficiently, right? If their gross profit margin is going up, that means that they're decreasing costs while still increasing production of this car. So that's a good sign. That's a good reason why the stock would kind of go up in price. Does that mean that it should go up to 420 a share? I don't know. I don't know if that's an appropriate <laughs> price for it. But it definitely means Tesla's somewhat on the right track. So I can see why investor um, confidence has improved in Tesla. And they seem like they're in the relatively right direction and I want to touch on it at least for the short term. What happens to the stock long term is a whole other question because okay. there's so many variables and there's so many, so much competition, potential competition. Yeah. I mean, there's Ford GM, like they're entering this electric game and they have the production infrastructure in place oh, yeah. already, like much more, much more than Tesla does. Yeah. And they already produce significantly more cars than Tesla like yeah, has in the entire past. Much dealer network. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Tesla has a lot to kind of, you know, touch on in the next decade moving forward. Uh, but I think this Model 3 will be a game changer. I mean, it already kind of has, but I think it'll continue to be a game changer moving into this new decade. And I think they're really going to have to compete on price at the end of the day sure. if they want to stay relevant in this future moving into the to the 2020s or the Roaring 20s decade, right? The roaring 20s. I or the Soaring 20s. The Soaring 20s. Yeah. There we go. Because it rhymes, you see. So. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's... Uh... I don't know, man. Tesla's Tesla's cool. They're um, I, I think they're doing a pretty good job of competing on price. Actually, I mean, once you have a, I mean, here it is. It's only twenty nineteen, and you've got a 
full scale production, all electric vehicle with a solid charging infrastructure around the nation. Definitely. That they're selling for under 40K, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard. I think you can get a, a BMW 2 Series for under 40K brand new. But anything above that, you're, you're up over 40, 50K. Right, know? right. And so to, to be in that kind of luxury segments, Wow, at that price point is nothing short of a miracle, right? Really, for Tesla. I mean, and then that kind of that kind of brings me around to. I'm sure everybody's, you know, kind of vaguely knows about this by this point. But back in November, which I guess was last month only, yeah, they uh, they announced the Cybertruck, which the internet Ooh, collectively, yeah, the Minecraft yeah, truck, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, it's, it's made out of three pixels, and and that's it. I actually pre-ordered one. Did you? No, I didn't. Yeah, hundred bucks. <laughs> you, yeah, anybody one, could be. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd be one of about two hundred and fifty thousand. So that's that's cool. But um, no, so I mean, you know, the Cybertruck, the internet it collectively nice. the lost their mind nice. over it for like three days and haven't really heard anything about it. But <laughs> that's supposed to enter production in twenty twenty one, and the base model of that is going to be thirty nine, allegedly, unless production costs run rampant and then they have to change the price point, but. Just for the base model of it to be at thirty nine thousand, I mean, you're already competitive with other major trucks in that segment. Right. You, know? you are. I yeah. Mean, and there, I, I think a brand new twenty twenty <coughs> Ford F one fifty is like, oh, good grief! I want to say it's like maybe thirty four, thirty five thousand. Right. Right around there. So, yeah. so they're getting their prices down. Uh, things are kind of looking up for Tesla in the distant future, right? The thing is, is there's a lot of variables that go into what could potentially happen. I'll tell you this, the com the competitors, competition is not going to just let Tesla smooth on in safely, oh, yeah. right? If they see this kind of starting to work on their end, uh, I mean, and they already are, GM, Ford, like they're already working on these electric cars, they've produced them. So uh, they're they're going to have a lot more competition, similar to what Netflix is facing right now oh, sure. with the streaming the streaming boom. I can see Tesla definitely having a similar situation I mean, going into already, 2020. Ford's already slashed their production of new models uh, for upcoming model years. I think they're down to like three or four models, maybe. I think yeah. they're going to keep like the Mustang and the the Explorer and, I don't know, probably whatever their electric SUV, E Mustang-inspired SUV is. But like that's pretty much it. I, I think Ford is seeing the direction that the automotive industry is headed, and they realize, like, hey, all these internal combustion cars, maybe we don't need to be producing all these different models. We just need three really cost-effective ones that we can churn a decent profit on and right. still keep up with companies like, say, Tesla or uh, or Fisker or uh, oh, what's the other one? Amazon is funding it. Rivian. Right. There it is. Um, so I don't know. They're they're definitely on board and they've got the resources to catch up really really quickly. Hundred percent. They do. They yeah. do. They're they're in a they're in a weird position. Like they're in a good position. Tesla. You know, it's still it's very speculative, right? It's not a stock that I would invest in personally just because I'm more of a fundamentals guy. Yeah. But it's definitely a stock I'm watching because it's an interesting one. It's yeah. kind of cool to see where they'll be in the next decade. Is it, you know, how is their plan going to work out? Are they going to be able to get this Model 3 really mass produced and just yeah. skyrocket it? Is this Cybertruck, this low cost Cybertruck truck? Is, can we call it that? Yeah, Cyber can we call truck it Cyber truck. truck truck. Is this going to be a game changer? Is it going to be a little redundant? <laughs> just a little bit. Is it going to have mass adoption? Uh, you know, by the consumers. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. You know, it's it, to be honest. I thought it was stupid at first, but it seems like one of those cars where it kind of grows on you a little bit. Oh, from the second what? I saw it, I was like, "Yo, that's the coolest." Thing <laughs> You're I've like, I'm getting one. <laughs> all about that. It's 2019. It's time we finally had something that looks like it. Right? Yeah, you know, it's I mean, it's let's, nice. Let's get modern. Let's you know. Yeah. Let's do it. The next three people who DM me, I'm gonna buy them a Tesla. Uh, what is it? Cybertruck. I'll buy yeah. you guys all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Not gonna do that. Sorry, guys. Can't do that. This is like Scott's tots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, just kind of a couple more facts, just kind of wrapping everything up. Uh, Tesla, looking forward, they have a lot to kind of be uh, optimistic about, right? We'll say. Uh, Model Y is going to be a new car. Have you, have you, have you looked at Model yeah. Y? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's going to be another car in addition to the Cybertruck that they'll be introducing, I believe, in the summer of 2020, they're supposed to be available. Um, and essentially, that's going to be a car that goes has a longer range. Um, it's also, it has a third row, so the seating, there, it can see up to seven passengers, so it's a bigger car, a um, little bit more modern, um, you know, kind of working out the quirks and quinks and whatnot of the car, um, and that's expected to hit the market of summer 2020. Um, oh, low battery. 
We'll, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> um, they're also supposed to be... If only there was some kind of supercharger network. So oh, we need to call Tesla. Oh, no, Tesla, gosh. come on, <laughs> fix our phone batteries. <laughs> um, they're also expected to get that semi-truck, the good old oh, Tesla yeah. semi-truck yeah, produced. Right. Those have been around, by the way. I think they're floating around here in the valley. They have. They have. Phoenix area. They're not mass-producing them yet, but they have, I think, let me see my notes... They have uh, several um, deposits ranging from five to twenty thousand dollars. Thousands of reservations that have been delayed. Yeah, Amazon already booked a bunch of them. Didn't they, they did. I think, yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. They've had to delay uh, those reservations on the cyber or sorry semi truck. Getting mixed up because of productions, you know, oh, production first, costs and everything. It's a first for Tesla. Yeah, it delayed seems. Production? I don't buy it. it seems like Tesla has a problem with the production stuff. So if any of you are uh, manufacturers, uh, yeah. probably hit up Elon Musk, he'll probably hire you or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's also part of this whole thing. I mean, he's a, he's a big, uh, I don't know, in the, the Grant Cardone style of, uh, what is it, make, make the promise first and then figure out how to make it work or something like, like over promise and then over deliver. Really, really um, quick, just for the Insta Live, guys, I'm going to be answering questions at the end of this. Give us like five minutes, just wrapping up the podcast and we'll be, Devin and I yeah, will answer your, yeah, you want to answer the questions? Right, I'll, I'll answer All right, so we'll answer all your guys' questions. Sure. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, I mean, he always promises big and then and then does the best he can to, to kind of <laughs> catch up to his, to his promises. So I mean, you know, they, they're pretty aggressive in their projections. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, he's, he's a very, uh, very yeah. Grant Cardone guy yeah. with well, those. And, you know, the other, the other tricky thing is, too, like looking for the long term headed, headed forward. As long as, uh, as long as Lord Elon can, can keep, his, uh, keep his public persona under control. I think. And, and what do you mean Elon Musk yeah. has a temper? Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, you know, I, I think that he tends to act irrationally on, on occasion. Oh, wow. Instagram's <laughs> going. All right, Instagram, you guys are going right here. Uh, okay, there you go. Oh, <laughs> you guys are getting busy. Right. But uh, anyway, you know, I mean, if you're just going and, and smoking a bunch of pot and losing your FAA certification and and suing hero <laughs> divers and calling them pedophiles and shit just on Twitter just because. Yeah, I um, mean, that you're going to have a little bit of a you know, <laughs> as long as you can get that under control, I think, and, and be a professional, maybe <laughs> we can we can uh, have decent projections going forward. Definitely. No, that's, I agree. That's kind of a big question. Mark for I agree. <laughs> We're going to shift this over here. <laughs> okay, so uh, just kind of wrapping up. I know we've been saying this. Um, also, we're, we're expected to see a new battery. So Elon Musk has been trying to work out this battery situation. They are supposed to be developing a battery that can last over a million miles. Um, and we're supposed to see more of that in 2020. Um, and then just to also touch on it, the Tesla App Store is supposed to have much more of a focus into 2020. So it'll be interesting to kind of see how that kind of wraps up and how that kind of takes off in uh, the new decade of Tesla, right? That is a new decade. <laughs> and then some overall like facts. So it's definitely like in my opinion, this is a battleground stock. And what that means is, essentially, it's going to be the bulls versus the bears. There's two sides of uh, this, uh, two, two opinions of how Tesla is doing. You can find people who have valid points for pro Tesla and valid points for not being a good stock. Which, as a fundamental investor, I wouldn't invest in it. That's just my personal take on it. But, you know, if you're kind of more risky and you're willing to be speculative, which I'm not a big fan of, yeah. give it a shot, I guess. There's a lot of people doing it, so, and they seem to have done okay, yeah. you know, they're, you know. Tesla calls all day. <laughs> Tesla <Yeah. the> calls. <laughs> um, fun facts. Let's hit in the fun fact hour. Yeah, let's have Perfect. some fun Perfect. facts. Yeah. Here's some fun facts with Tesla. Uh, approximately 20% of Tesla shares are currently sold short, which means some traders are hoping to profit from a decline in stock prices. Hmm. So 20% of all stocks traded are sold short. Yeah, I've contributed to that a little bit. <laughs> I've shorted Tesla a little bit. Oh, yeah. And I'm, uh, there's some pretty big figures, I think, for <laughs> the, the amount of money that's been lost on Tesla shorts. Yeah, and yeah. I, uh, I'm a contributor to well, that for sure. And let's get those numbers. Uh, apparently, <laughs> as of December 20th, $8 billion have been lost in Tesla shorts um, since June 3rd at their low price of 178 a share. So the shorts have not been having a good year with Tesla this year. Um, Eight billion dollars. That's a that's a decent decent. That's a solid <laughs> chunk of change. That's yeah, a couple that's pennies there for sure. So uh, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, and a lot of them are still covering their bets, which basically mm -hmm. means they're still covering their essential view on the stock of trying to short it. Um, so they're not seeing it going anywhere within the next year yeah. or so, essentially. And you know, I found over the last. Uh, probably two or three years that I've been doing stuff with stocks, I, 
I found it to be a pretty safe general rule of thumb to never bet against Elon Musk. <laughs> they just, he somehow, for whatever reason, is somehow able to pull the, the share price out of a nosedive with some crazy, ridiculous new announcements. <laughs> you know, in three years, they'll be selling the Model 3 for $100 or right. whatever. I, you know, that's the kind of, they, they always find a way. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not confident enough in my skepticism to continue to bet against Tesla. <laughs> it's, just, it's kind of one of those stocks where you just kind of well. watch it from the distance and yeah, see what happens. Yeah, I, I right? think it's a good one to sit on the sidelines and, and watch some people get ridiculously wealthy off of it. Definitely. Some well, any closing thoughts? Shirts. Or is that your closing thought? Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I think that's kind of my closing thought. I mean, in okay. general, Tesla's an incredible company, and I, I really believe in their cause, and I believe in what they're doing. And I can't say this about a lot of CEOs in the tech world or any other industry, but I think that that Elon is really out there to improve the world and improve the, the human condition. Sure. And um, I, I don't know. I, he is a visionary. He's got to work on his people skills a little bit i think but no, he's, he's you know i mean when you're a, when you're a genius tech giant I, I guess you kind of get a little bit of leeway there but uh you know long story short i don't know i'm really really excited to see where they go i i love the fact that i live in a world where this company exists and i think it's about time that ford and gm <laughs> somebody gave them a run for their money right i agree yeah cool yeah well, yeah. So um, I guess that's kind of our. Uh, we'll kind of wrap that up as uh, yeah, the Tesla episode podcast. One. So episode one of we'll, the podcast. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions on uh, on companies or individuals that you want us to to uh, profile in the future, feel free to recommend them there. I personally think it'd be a lot of fun to get a just into a whole one of these just on Elon Musk. But um, that aside, I think it'd be fun to dig into like Saudi oil. And, uh, I really want to do a podcast on WeWork general. and how WeWork works. So WeWork would be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun, fun digging into them. There's a lot to talk about there. Adam Newman is a, well, he's a character. He's, <laughs> he's even weirder than Elon Musk. So <laughs> <laughs> he really is, man. All right, guys. Um, thank you for watching the podcast. We are going to Instagram Live to answer questions. Uh, but podcast, we are out. Stay tuned for the next one.